guys and welcome to our second ever live shoot um, with me I am Brett Field and <laughs> I am Astrid from Sweet Rebellion hiding behind our <laughs> light reflector there um, cool thanks to the first of you who have come in um, we are shooting uh, very quick on kit D4 Nikon uh, 2470 2.8 lens, um, my favorite. And uh, we're gonna start off shooting um, on F5.6, and we are shooting. Maybe Astrid um, can chat through what we're shooting today. Um, so, this is a gin and grapefruit cheesecake. So if you're in lockdown and you've run out of gin, can you just do cheesecake with grapefruit? Yeah, okay. totally. <laughs> Gin's optional. Gin's optional, but often uh, required. required. Okay, cool. So um, process from here, we start very much just with the basics, 100% as is, um, product untouched, and then Ashford will start to style it from there. The reason we do that is because once we've made changes we can't go back so we shoot document and get what we need and what's uh, uh, in its primary form and then we dress up from there then cut and we'll build our shot over time it's very unlikely that we shoot and use this shot in the beginning but it's very good to have because you might want to show steps at a later stage where your client might want this and only request it later because despite what the brief says it's very often not what they ask for later on. So So first things first, sorry, I'm just gonna rotate the, the cheesecake so that we get the smoothest edge. That's probably a little dip there. Yeah. Like that way a little. That way. What do you You tell me. I'll hold that. Mm -hmm. There maybe, eh? That's the base. Yep. Cool. Okay. Okay, here's, here's a quick little tip. So we've got a um, shiny surface that we want to take advantage of. And if you can't see, there's a tiny little fruit fly that's landed on there. And now the temptation to get rid of that now is something you need to try and um, avoid. Because as soon as you touch that, you mess the surface up and trying to remove things like fingerprints or inconsistencies in a shiny layer in post is near impossible. For me to get rid of this tiny little uh, fruit fly, one touch, done, gone, and we don't mess the surface. So little imperfections like that, leave it for post, don't touch it now. Okay, first shot, let's go. Uh, when I'm shooting 24-70, I'm going to... Um, typically shoot at full zoom that gives me better depth of field so I'm shooting f5.6 um, and at 70 focal length and we've got our first shot um, nothing particularly special we're not going to spend too much time I've shot it in landscape. I'm going to get a portrait. Move my chair back. And you can see. Well, you can't actually. Um, the reason I shoot portrait, even for something as landscape as this, is so that I can. Um, use it in stories later. I might um, get somebody like Le Crusade whose um, cake stand we're using. They might want to share it on stories, but they might want to put their own tags. They might want to put product info. So I shoot to leave space for other people to use this later on. And it's also great for Pinterest to have your portrait shots. Ah, Pinterest is one that I never think of. Um, I think the light's reflecting here, so it won't show us. Won't let me show you. 
you'll have to wait for the post video. Um, yeah, it's not going to show you. Right. Um, Should we start? Some yeah, I'm this? happy we've got our first uh, portrait and landscape shots. Okay, so what um, what I decided to get for this shoot, we don't have a grapefruit tree, unfortunately, in the garden, but we do have a lemon tree, so I thought some greenery would be nice, and I managed to find a couple of branches that have um, a few little blossoms, which were also quite pretty. So we're going to play around with that, and then I also sliced some grapefruit, um, which looks beautiful. It's like a really nice, bold pop of colour, so we're going to try play around with that. Okay, there was our last shot. I've managed to get, uh, hopefully some of the reflection has gone. Um, to those of you on the live stream, thanks for joining us. Um, obviously any questions, send them through and we can um, try and deal with those here and answer your questions while we shoot. of greenery here, maybe a little bit too big, might need to trim these and take that out. Maybe bring them through maybe the bottom here. Yeah. And take that gunky leaf off. I like the blossom in, in view, that's quite pretty. Okay, so Start with that. One thing with the um, the leaves, what we can do, I'm just going to cut this one off if you don't mind, yeah, it's just fine. stick it out a bit. Um, cut it into smaller lengths and then you can get them to go into the shape that you want. So we want this sort of wrapping around. So we've used two because what we want is we want this beautiful little um, fake grapefruit blossom. <laughs> Can I leave that with you? Yeah. Um, important when you're talking about props and styling to remember that it's not just uh, antique rusty um, props, but also things like um, natural flowers or greenery. Right. Again? Okay. Yes, please. We're building slowly here, so much like we did just now on our first initial two shots, we're going to shoot our um, landscape and then we're going to shoot one portrait and do very little else with it. Right. Um, so take your time, have a look. Um, this uh, blossom is a little bit too front and center. I'm gonna push it back mm -hmm. and then it will start to be more in focus. Yeah. But also less distracting. You can see now our Blossom is in focus, but also somewhat less distracting. Uh, just gonna wave to all the, oh, these are outdoors. <laughs> How have I done that? Um, okay, we back. <laughs> Hope you guys liked our garden. Hey, Chris, nice to see you. Um, anybody looking in South Africa, looking for camera gear, Look up Chris who's just joined and um, I've been buying kit from Chris for, I don't know, it must be close on 10 years now. So I uh, highly recommend Chris and no, that's not an ad. It's just a shout out to a very honest and a very knowledgeable guy in the industry. Right, did we get both of those? Okay, we're going to get landscape, uh, portrait, sorry. And you can see we've just built a nice little uh, start to our set here. Uh, important, um, you'll see I, I typically shoot 
just under in terms of exposure rather than over um, because I want to keep as much depth in my histogram to take advantage of uh, later um, in post so that I can really move uh, both up and down in my exposure at different places so that I can really get this to pop. Um, cool, I think we are ready to, won't you just put that um, whiteboard back for us? Yeah. I'm just, I'm a, I love the zero degree angle, but what I'm missing is I'm not getting this beautiful shine at the top. So I'm just doing another set of shots at about a 10 degree angle. Should we not use a, an external light to enhance that shine a bit? We can, yeah. Okay. Great idea. Um, you can see now how we get this nice shine at the top. So. Yeah, so the, I, I will shoot some, uh, the comment here is that I'm taking the pick uh, kind of half the frame. Um, I'll often cut off. Um, we'll get some that will be almost 100%. Um, but if you try and fit too much into your frame and still leave border, you end up getting lost and you, you don't get any focal uh, points. So, you want to get in nice and tight and really um, draw the focus to where you want your viewer to be looking. So that's why we do that. Uh, maybe you can help keep an eye on here to see if there's any more comments. I don't want to miss any. Okay, so here's the light. Right, let's go. Uh, let's go to the back. Oh, is it doing that now? On the setting, it's on the... No, I think it's just not charged. Okay, let's leave that. Okay. Sure. Okay. Turn, turn it off. Yeah. Should we add another little one for balance on this side, or is it going to be too much green, do you think? No, I like that. Um, maybe let's cut the front off. I just don't like these little... Okay. Maybe we can bring that back. So what we're doing now is we're just trying to balance the, the greenery on either side um, for a more full shot. What um, would you like a small no, that's perfect. I'm going to go charge that. Okay, we're just putting the light on charge, but we're going to carry on shooting under natural light. Hi to those who have just joined. Right, so here's our full shot coming up. I'm just going to move it over ever so slightly so that I don't get... If you hear a lot of noise, that's Astrid in the background charging our light. So now we've we're going to shoot full and we're going to shoot up. You can pass that underneath, you'll be able to yeah. shoot with it plugged in. And there's our nice shine full shot. And a shoot at zero degrees. This really helps show the layers. Let's try with artificial light to show people the difference. So one of the trends in food photography at the moment is uh, harsh shadows at the back. Mm -hmm. Okay, now what you can see, tilt it up to the gel more. Like that. Mm -hmm. You can see now our gel is almost illuminated. Yeah, almost reflected. Let's start this other camera again. Right. Okay, 
so uh, just up ever so slightly up more yeah just to get you out of the frame there and now you can see how it's literally glowing shoot one from the top and not only that we see these beautiful rim lighting coming in and catch lights on uh, some of the edges um, cool let's build our next yeah I would like to include some grapefruit slices here yeah Sounds good. But once we put them on, we can't take them off, so we've got to be quite careful how we do that. Um, so you'll, you'll notice Astrid will place these slightly off-center to the back, and that's so that once we lower our angle, we can still see them nicely, rather than them sitting too far to the front and us missing... Um, does that look yeah, that's looking good. Okay. I think if you get that light just hitting the edge at not full, just, just on, yeah, no, a little bit less. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so now we're not wanting to cast any shadows, but you'll see that on the grapefruit here, those cells are just having a lot of catch light. A um, little bit up. Little, little bit around. There we go. So now we're going to be focusing on the grapefruit and we're going to do a couple of shots here. Let's bring it down more, mm -hmm. uh, up more, sorry, and around. There we go. So. And now we can see how this grapefruit is really, we can see the individual cells. Um, in terms of post-production edit, um, each of these live, live sessions, I will do a screen recording of our post-production edit and post that as a second video. Um, so subscribe to our YouTube channel. On there we'll put, um, at the end of each video, we'll put a link to the post-production edit so that you can watch step by step from the beginning all the way through to uh, export of, of our final product. Right, what's next, stylist? I actually think it looks quite nice from top down now because we've got these slices which are yeah. really pretty. You Good. want to put some light onto it. Yeah, you want to use the screen. Yeah. Just yeah. So we always have a, a little fold up sort of step step stool, if you want to call it, uh, which is great for your top down. Right. That's too much light, maybe there. Uh, that looks good. So okay, let's get in a bit tighter. I like most people, Brett has amazing ability not to shave. I can't do that. <laughs> just takes really well. just takes some practice. Um, but yeah, I'm very happy with how that's looking. Nice. Yeah, that looks good. Should we maybe try with a little bit of greenery on here? Because in the top down, we don't get that. Julius Caesar it. Yeah. I yeah, think sounds so. good. Let's maybe. So again here, what we can do can is, one, eh? yeah, if you look here, we just snap it a little That's too thick. and uh, that allows us to wrap it around our subject nicely. This side as well? Yeah, that looks cool. Awesome. Back? Or we just do uh, that? No, because we're going to be shooting from the front. So, and the flower? Yeah, that looks nice. Okay. Oh, this is awesome. This might be our hero shot. So now I'm shooting focal point at the front and then I'm going to focus 
on the grapefruit. That gives me two different shots that I can tell a little bit of a food story. We might be talking about the gel or we might be talking about um, the grapefruit. So it allows me to, or my client, to pick what they want their focus to be. Uh, we're going to shoot some. Oh, this is so awesome. So again, we started with it at the bottom and then Ashley's brought it up to the top where it really starts to look nice, but obviously we start to touch. So we know we've already banked all those shots. So now it doesn't matter. Um, and they absolutely are our hero shots. Definitely, I can see it already. There's some comments coming through. Ah, that's what I say. No, it's just people waving. Oh, okay. If there was a comment that I've missed, <laughs> please, please send. just pop it back in and we'll deal with that straight away for you. Are we ready <clears throat> to slice this baby? Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. So should I take these off first? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds probably a bit um, Again, wet cloth, dry cloth, always in the studio when you start. Okay, so that's perfect. Don't worry, we are. And then we're going to put the slice into a plate, maybe in front, or just take the slice out. I think it's we've got space on this. Yeah. Okay. So let's find plates. We'll do both. Um. Those who watched the last one will remember that we we always cut a big wide slice, so a greedy slice, and that allows us to show nicely inside our subject while we're shooting. And it really pays to take your time doing this because once you cut it, that is what it is. Okay. So some people were asking about the shot on our Instagram, which had the what was that caramel one that had? I don't know what that had that about. very pointed. Oh, the it's a biscoff or speculoos cheesecake. So some of you were asking how we got that so neat. Two cuts and then just shift the actual cake away from the slice and then just take your time to line it up and then you can see that we've got a perfect slice. So we'll shoot that first and then we'll dress it in the same way that we do anything else. Um, that can stay. Right. Uh, shoot with art first. Okay. It's coming now. So, landscape, portrait, light on, light on. Sorry, <laughs> I was looking at the people joining. So now we're trying to show Oh. edges so we're going to get light hitting here we're going to get some nice catch light and it's going to show off our edge um, I need we've got a little bit of crumb and 
again, yeah, just take your time. Don't get frustrated, otherwise you... Okay, yeah. sorted. Just with regards to the edges, if you want your cheesecake or any kind of a mousse cake to have a nice, clean, smooth edge, you line your tin with acetate, obviously not something that you're baking, but something like this, um, and then you don't get these sort of crinkles from the paper. Unfortunately, I didn't have acetate and I wasn't able to get during lockdown, but that really gives you a beautiful, clean, smooth edge. So unfortunately for Brett, he's going to have to do a little bit more editing on this one. <laughs> Um, I see people asking for a slice. Yeah, that's fine. We've, <laughs> we've cut you a slice. Just come and fetch it. Come over, Kate. Um, <laughs> right. So we're going back to this. We've got a nice contrast. And you can see there. Showing the contrast. Now we go up in our angle slightly. No. Let's get that to Let me just get this to play. No. Okay. So we've just upped the angle a little bit so you can get the shine as well as the slice. And now we're gonna go portrait. Green is just a little bit distracting at the back there, so I'm going to bring it into my shot so that it's not just poking out the top and that it's more deliberately part of the shot. Cool, and then I think our last shot is overhead. Uh, turn it up a little. Mm -hmm. There we go. Now we've got mm -hmm. our berry, and then one of my favorite shots, just straight up, super clean. Pac-Man shot, kind of looks like Pac-Man eating the slime. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and then we have to get higher. When you're shooting something like this, you're gonna find often your, your camera battles to focus and it's gonna be jumping. Just aim for somewhere in the, on the edges here because your autofocus is using uh, contrast to, um, to do its focus. So if it's got something like this where it lacks, fo uh, lacks contrast, you're gonna. Um, There's a question, Brett. What lens is that? Lens uh, is twenty four seventy two point eight, and don't be sorry for questions. We love questions, and uh, more questions the better because then we know what we're answering and producing the content that you guys want. We're ready to take a slice out now and do that shot with the plate in the front. Right. I'm going to use the knife. Okay. So we always wipe the knife in between so we don't get any of that cheese that we saw over the crumb. And you can use the second knife to get yourself lined up. Always a scary moment holding my breath. Almost like you don't have faith in me. <laughs> okay, success. <laughs> What's that supposed to be? Okay, okay, then just remember to place on your plate deliberately again. We're going to push this further back because it's now going to become supplementary to our shot. Um, I've got a couple of forks which we might line things up a bit. Yeah, let's. I, I just want to shoot with as is, okay. and then we'll dress a little bit more. Yeah. See so if we can't get some more 
Let's see how much we're bouncing. Mm -hmm. So, for those of you not familiar with our studio, we've got um, a great big window on the other side of this. Hey, Andrew Bell, all the way from Australia. Hey, Bell guy. Andrew Bell and I started photography together in high school. And we had lots of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it at that. Yeah. So you don't want this one now, hey? Uh, not yet. Okay. Right, so we're shooting the slice. We're getting a little bit of the background in to add context to the shot. Still shooting 5.6. Right, and then our landscape shot. So here, I'm just twisting ever so slightly so that we can get both um, sides of this slice rather than just seeing down the one side of it. Right. Okay. We are getting right. a reflection onto the backdrop there um, from outside. I'm just playing around with the curtain to try and see how we can fix that. Okay. So as the light moves, you need to you need to work with it as it works against you. So we're opening one curtain and we're closing another. Love the color of the cake. I know, this is totally natural. This is just ruby grapefruit. I didn't add any color. So um, yeah, it, it works out pretty well. Right, back at it. Let's get some light shining at the front here. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of. Just catching that top edge as well. Yeah, perfect. So it's not going to let me show you. Okay. It's a teaser so that you guys watch the editing one. All right, let's get in nice and close. I think one of the things people get wrong with food photography early on is they're too scared to get up close and. Um, as a result, the viewer just gets a photo back that is food in the way that they used to seeing it, i.e. the same as if they would be eating. And what you want to do is you want to change the perspective, change the angles, change the focus and the zoom so that people see food in a different way and different highlights and different uh, points of interest. And then food becomes a lot more interesting. Don't forget the open slice or where the slice was because that makes for a very cool shot as well. I think we can bring yeah, I think this we need a bit of up that for that one and we'll get the open slice now. Now, a little bit of psychology. Um, up and to the right. So you'll notice that for the most part, I aim everything up and to the right, and that's just a psychological thing. Um, things like graphs are always done where positive is top right-hand quadrant. So always point things up and right if you can, um, and so long as they still make sense. But if you can, psychologically, it's, it's associated with things that are better and, and nicer and more positive. Okay, um, I've got a couple of forks here. I think we can maybe work those in. Maybe put one on the plate, have a couple lying around, or think the cake size maybe. Right, yeah. Mm. Nice, that works. Okay. 
Another thing you could do is bring in a napkin or a tea towel now, but I think we're going for a bit of a yeah. cleaner look. And that, that's really nice to soften the image, but I think this we want clean cut. We want the layers to really shine. And then another cool thing with, from a styling point of view, forks or cutlery, it talks to people eating. It's the enjoyment of food. It's, it's why we're here. It's why, why we do this. And if you put, even though there's one slice, one plate, multiple forks, it starts to lend and build the, the story and the narrative around we're eating together. It's something that people are doing together. There's multiple people involved. So always bear that in mind. Remember that every time we change up, we want to go back and shoot all our angles. Portrait and landscape. Um, do we want to add some? Mm, some slices. Um... I really love these videos. Are there any tips on photographing decorated icing cookies besides flat lay? The details? Uh, yeah, so I do have a tip for that. Um, so because everything sits at the top and you've all you've got um, is uh, decoration and interest at the top what you need to do is after you've done flat lay which is the obvious one do things like stacking and then you can lean one up against it so you've created a stack you're going to lean up against it and that way you you show the cookies they'll they'll have slight differences in in height so they'll stack up quite interestingly and then you can lean them up against each other um, you can introduce props, things like cup of tea or something that's going to make sense in terms of your narrative and your food narrative that you're building. So, so long as you've got something like that, then you can lean it up against it. And then you can even introduce people, a hand holding it, um, dunking it, if, it, if that makes sense. Um, some cute packaging, maybe putting them into a jar or a little... little string tied up. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I hope that answers your question. Cool, Ooh, so we're going some, back. Yeah, added some slices now, so now we've got a bit more colour, a bit more um, interest. Yeah, let's just dim this a little. Mm -hmm. Okay. So even though we are shooting in the foreground, don't forget to dress and build on the, on the background because that's going to continue to build uh, points of interest at the back. So you can see, no, to turn that off. Mm -hmm. You can see here yeah, how the grapefruit on top of the um, cheesecake. cheesecake still makes sense in the background. I think we can try a top down of this. Yeah. Okay. Do we need the mic? Yeah. Do you want the stick? Awesome, I'll try it out. Love the idea of introducing people. Thanks again. Yeah, I think too often we don't introduce people uh, just because it's food. Food is 
is made for people to enjoy. So absolutely include people. And yeah, uh, if you guys have shots, share them with us, tag them in there. Um, we're happy to give you some pointers. Uh, we're just here to advance uh, the food photography industry and help people where we can. So feel free to jump into the DMs, send us uh, some pictures and we'll either create content based around those questions if they come up a lot or we can just give you some uh, help in the DMs. Just slice the grapefruit in half. I'm not sure if it's going to be too big and bulky for top down or if it will work. Yeah. Just have a look, just taking a little seed out. Just Maybe a bit full. Well, yeah. Let's have a look. Maybe we lose that in favor of that. Yeah. Although, maybe we bring it. No, I think you're right. It's maybe we put this. Yeah. 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 So again, we're just balancing out the greenery. We need to come back. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I've learned from Brett is that you don't have to have everything framed within the shots. It's fine to also cut off half that grapefruit or half the cheesecake. Um, it can still make for a very interesting image. Case in point. Now, like I said, these dark shadows, it's very trendy in the food industry at the moment. Um, you'll see lots of the magazines are shooting this type of um, or requesting this type of shot. I know Astrid isn't the biggest fan of it. I'm not. <laughs> which is also fine, like we develop our own styles. So we shoot both. And then you can see better. <laughs> <laughs> Some say better, others yeah. say different. <laughs> um, and that's that's the difference between uh, client and photographer. So um, the client might want something specific, and you need to know how to shoot that. So this idea that I'm shoot only um, natural light is crazy because your client might need something and the conditions don't allow it so don't be scared of uh, external light and get comfortable with shooting both and play around um, it's half the fun anyway so we've got our shots um, one more that I want to do. No, there's one more that I want to do. So there's at least two. <laughs> um, another cool little trick here. Um, makeup, what are they? Spon sponges. Makeup sponges from Clicks or any pharmacy. So just a basic makeup sponge. They stick nicely to smooth surfaces. We can stack them up. And I want this grapefruit to face upwards. Mm. So now when I shoot it from this side, you can see it sits. And let's do a lens. Uh, this will look even nicer. A little bit more light mm -hmm. up yeah. front. Yeah, there you go. Too much. Too much. Yeah. You can see now that grapefruit actually sits up top um, and on edge, but you'll never get a, never be able to balance it without those sponges. So that would be at the top of my list of things to buy when you get into food photography. I'm not a fan of all these fake constructed things. I like to shoot natural 
um, but you do need to prop things up from time to time um, and that's one of the best tools for that love how the cake that is cut directs your eyes into the full cake yeah absolutely um, it also talks to I've cut and I've pulled and placed it so it's just nice and neat and still makes sense um, and still shows it off for what it is okay the shot that I'd like to get I always like to get this one is to take the fork take a little kind of mouthful so that you can really see that nice soft creamy texture of the cheesecake so we might have to turn that slice a little bit uh right i see we've had some uh new people join along the way so while astrid's doing that um just a reminder to please subscribe to our brand new youtube channel um where we'll do the post-production edit so we'll place these um, videos but then we'll also give you the post-production edit so um yeah please subscribe um if you go to our instagram bio just hit the link in the bio and hit subscribe there's only one video up there for now but we're doing this at least weekly and you'll get the post-production edit so you can see everything right now we are at the end of our food story here and the narrative which starts to talk to the fun part which is eating and as you can see how if you look in the beginning where we just had cake what cheesecake on um, the stand and nothing else there wasn't any of this for those of you who weren't there there was no greenery there was no plate up front there was no cutlery just white background and we've dressed this up over time and now we've got all these different shots that we can talk to in three months time if you want to change the story we want to talk now about how we made it rather than um, how we had one hero shot we've got those shots in our in our collection so always remember to uh, keep those uh, again thanks to those who are joining now uh, any questions anything food photography related happy to answer from a practical point of view, I just want to point out that the cheesecake is now starting to go soft. So make sure if you're shooting something like this, obviously if it's frozen, it must be frozen solid. And um, something like this, you've got to make sure it's set overnight. So that's not just set, it's like fully set because it gets quite warm in the studio and we've spent, I don't know, a good half an hour working here. And um, so it will soften with time. So just keep that in mind. Um... Let's go to this side. Mm -hmm. I've just put some I've put some uh, low down. Mm -hmm. I've squeezed some juice kind of going out of here. Probably a little bit cheesy. But as a last shot, we might get something from it. Who knows? Bring this in front so that I can really get this idea of somebody eating here. And yeah, it looks quite cool. I noticed that you use continuous lighting quite a bit. Do you ever use flash? Um, I'll use flash sometimes for some uh, advertising shots where we're trying to freeze uh, water splashing or something like that. And only if the continuous lighting won't allow for it. But typically I favor continuous lighting over flash 
because I can see and build it as I'm doing it. So for things like reflections, you can see how I will um, work with Astrid to move the exact angle because I want to get a reflection or I want to get a, um, a specific catch light, catch light building along um, an edge or something like that. So absolutely do use flash, but only uh, for very specific and typically advertising shots. Um, when I say ad advertising, not editorial. Editorial, I'll typically still shoot like this. Advertising when, we, when we're freezing, and it typically comes down to a liquid. Um, yeah, so that's our... Astrid will have to tell us what this is. <laughs> what is this again? Uh, gin and grapefruit cheesecake. So that's our gin and uh, grapefruit cheesecake that we have shot beginning to end. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and join, and join us. Um, and please drop in any questions into the DMs, anything you'd like to see, anything you're struggling with, uh, and we'll help or build content um, around those so that we can continue to help and build uh, the food photography industry. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Ciao.